Okay, so let's look at an example here. Um, and in this example, what we want to do is we want to work with known Taylor series and techniques for manipulating them. Right? So we've seen that we can integrate term by term, we can differentiate term by term. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that you can also substitute. You can also multiply power series. So the power series of a product under reasonable conditions will be the product of the power series. You just have to be very careful about how you multiply those power series out. Right? So if you think about trying to get the first few terms in the Maclaurin series for this function, right? If we were going to, you know, let's, let's suppose for a second that we actually wanted to do this the long way, right? So imagine doing this the long way. What would you do? You'd say, okay, uh, f, f of x is e to the x cos x, okay? So f of 0 is 1. f prime of x, oh, we've got to use product rule, right? e to the x cos x minus e to the x sin x, okay? So f prime of 0, um, well, also 1, right? Because that's going to go to 0. Okay, we get to the second derivative. We get e to the x cos x minus e to the x sin x. Still working on just that term, right? Product rule. And then we're going to come over here. Um, minus e to the x sin x. All right, uh, and then we're going to get minus, when I take the derivative there, e to the x cos x. So I actually get minus 2 e to the x sine x, which implies that the second derivative is 0. Uh, and then you go on, right, third derivative. So we're going to get minus 2 e to the x sine x minus 2 e to the x cos x. And so the third derivative at 0 is, is minus 2. And we could carry on from there, right? Um, and so, of course, if we were doing, I guess if we're dividing, you know, 3 factorial, 3 factorial, so we get minus a third. Um, we could keep going, right? But, and, and maybe it's not so bad because actually, I mean, you can you do actually get a pattern this time, right? You get, um, this is going to be, pull out the minus 2, and you have um, e to the x cos x minus e to the x sine x, um, which is, um, oh, which is what we had here, right? And so you can, you can play around and kind of keep going and see, actually, no, sorry, it'll be plus. So we're not quite where, back where we started, um, but if you cycle through, I think you do about three more, you start seeing a pattern, it's going to repeat, but do we really want to go down that road? Um, maybe there's another way to do it, right? And so the other way you can do this is you can say, well, look, um, f of x is e to the x cos x, but e to the x is the sum n going from 0 to infinity, x to the n over n factorial. Okay, and then we have the sum n going from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial, okay? And if you want to, you can, I mean, you can be sophisticated about this. You can write down general formulas for the product of two power series, right? Um, you want to figure out what's the coefficient for, for the, you know, x to the n in the expansion, and so you have to look at, you basically have to add up all the coefficients where the power from here times the power from here, right, where those two powers add up to give you the x to the n that you want, and then you add up all the coefficients. Um, you can write up a general formula, but we only want the first few terms, so let's just, let's just write out the first few terms in each series, right? So over here we get 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial and so on, right? Then we have 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial, x to the 4 over 4 factorial, and so on. And so we start multiplying things out, right? We have 1, um, we have x, and that's, that x is going to be the only, the only time we get x, right? Um, and then we look for, okay, for x squared. How do we get x squared? There's actually 
two ways to get x squared. We can go here or we can go there, right? Um, oh, but you get x squared over 2 factorial minus x squared over 2 factorial, right? And that's, we've accounted for all the things that could have x squared because everything here is going to be higher degree, everything there is higher degree. So there's actually no x squared term. Then we move on to x cubed. How can we get x cubed? Um, actually, we should probably sneak in that, right? There's x cubed over 3 factorial, right? Because there's two ways to get x cubed. We can get x cubed over 3 factorial times 1. So we have x cubed over 3 factorial. And then we can also do x times that. So we get minus x cubed over 2 factorial, right? And we can go on. So if we combine those, 1 plus x, uh, 1 over 6 minus a half, right? So then we have 1 over 6 minus 3 over 6. We get minus 2 over 6, which is minus 1 over 3. So that should be a minus sign. Minus 1 over 3 x cubed and so on. And yeah, it agrees with what we had over here, right? Which one is more work? Maybe, you know what, maybe in this case it's a, it's a fairly break-even proposition. I'm not sure. I think, I think that with practice this is going to be faster, right? Um, product rule derivatives can get ugly, right? Especially, I mean, here things at least sort of cycle and simplify, but that's not always going to happen, right? Sometimes these derivatives can get really gross. But here it's, it's just distributive property, right? It's just distributing and collecting terms. Um, something you've been doing for a long time. You've never really had to do it with infinite series before, but it's the same principle as when you multiply two binomials together, right? Same idea.